were there black prophets from the ones that were mentioned to us? And we will find actually a few. One of them, historically speaking, is Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam is biblically described as having dark skin. Bani Israel, they had various colors, historically speaking. Why? Because their origins were different. Some of them had Arab origins. Some of them had some Egyptian origin and so on and so forth. Rasulullah comes from the lineage of a black woman. Who is that woman? Hajar alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam. The man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to directly. Kalimullah. The man who the Qur'an speaks about more than any other human being in history, subhanAllah, Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet sallallahu did not just say that he was black. He said that Musa alayhi salam, when I saw him, he resembled the people of Az-Zut or Shanu'ah, the two darkest tribes amongst the Arabs. So the Prophet sallallahu said Musa alayhi salam had the blackest skin. He was not part of the problem with Hollywood imagery, like Musa alayhi salam does not look like Christian Bale. All right? He doesn't look like, the, and even the older movie, The Ten Commandments, right? There is no man, subhanAllah, that is praised more in the Qur'an and spoken about more in the Qur'an than him. So if you have a problem with people of darker skin, you have a problem with Musa alayhi salam, then you have a serious problem with the Qur'an, and you have a serious problem with faith altogether. So subhanAllah, how can a racist be a Muslim then? How can a racist be a believer? How can a racist say he loves the Qur'an? Now, the Prophet who you have the most controversy about always in history is Jesus alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. His image has been politicized throughout history. Even the earliest days of Christianity after the Apostle Paul, the image that Jesus assumed depended on the culture that Paul uh, was reaching. To the Persians, looked like Mithras. He looked exactly like their Persian gods. To the Romans, he looked like their Roman gods. To the Egyptians, he looked like the Egyptian gods. To the Indians, some of the Hindus actually said that Isa alayhi salam was an incarnation of the Lord Vishnu. So they portrayed him as a carnation of the Lord Vishnu. What does Jesus, peace be upon him, look like? Interestingly enough, we find a disagreement amongst the Sahaba themselves. So we find a few ahadith. Uh, one of them is from Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this is an authentic hadith that the Prophet sallallahu says that while I was sleeping at the Kaaba, I saw a dark man who is the most handsome of dark men that you have ever seen. He's praising the beauty of Isa alayhi salam. He said he had hair that was reaching to between his ears and his shoulders like the most beautiful of hair that you've ever seen. He combed his hair and water was dripping from his hair and he was leaning on two men who were doing tawaf around the Kaaba. So I asked, I said, Man hadha, who is this? So they said, this is Al-Masih ibn Maryam. Then I saw a man with wiry hair and who was blind in his right eye as if it was a floating grape. And I said, who is this? And they said, this is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. This is the Antichrist. Ibn Abbas anhu though, he has a narration where the Prophet Sallallahu says, I saw Musa, Isa, and Ibrahim alayhim salam And Isa alayhi salam was of a red complexion, curly hair and a broad chest. Musa alayhi salam was of a dark complexion, straight hair, and a tall stature as if he was of the people of Azut. Ibn Mas'ud's narration, says that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the Al-Masih al-Dajjal in front of the people and he said, Allah is not one-eyed while al-Dajjal is blind in the right eye. Why? Because the Dajjal will claim to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Allah is not one-eyed. Al-Dajjal is blind in the right eye. And he said, his, his eye looks like a rotten grape. Then he said, ﷺ, while I was sleeping near the Kaaba last night, I saw in my dream, فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ آدَمُ كَأَحْسَنِ مَا يُرَى مِنْ أَدَمُ The same thing that he said, in the narration of Ibn Umar. There is another narration from Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, also in al-Bukhari, where he says, لا والله ما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعيسى أحمر. He said, I swear by Allah that the Prophet وسلم, did not say that Isa alayhi salam had red skin. So Umar radiallahu anhu is attaching an oath to it. He said, ولكن قال بينما أنا نائم أطوف بالكعبة فإذا رجل آدم and so on and so forth. Now the point of this is, Number one, we should not dispute like the Christians do about the color of Isa alayhi salam because it doesn't matter. You have conflicting narrations. The stronger of them, obviously that Isa alayhi salam had dark skin, which would be more historically accurate, but it doesn't matter. That's the point here. It was a non-factor and it's part of the wisdom of not portraying the Prophet. Ibn al-Manzur, he says that Hajar, Musa, Isa, and Adam alayhi salam, because Adam means dark, actually in the Arabic language. That's how the Arabs used to describe someone with dark skin. 
the Sahaba did not care to ask much about this. And this is very significant because if you look at the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they used to ask him about everything. But this was not a concern that they had. It simply did not matter to them. So we should not portray them and it should not become an issue to where it becomes politicized. Some of the other Prophets that are mentioned in the Qur'an or figures, you have Dhul Qarnayn. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and ibn Abbas, they both say that he was uh, a black king. Now obviously, Dhul Qarnayn is a controversial historical figure in and of itself because is he Alexander, is he Cyrus, Allahu alam. Again, it doesn't matter. The point being though, at this point now, because we know that there are prophets that Allah mentioned and there are prophets that Allah did not mention. The Prophet ﷺ says that there were 124,000 prophets. Authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad. Amongst them, 315 were messengers. So you can imagine how many of them were of different languages, how many of them were of different races, what they must have looked like, where they were sent to. That would mean that there were African prophets, there were Indian prophets, there were Chinese prophets, there were pro prophets that were sent probably to the Americas way before, right, with the, with the ancient settlers of this land. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذَّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We don't punish the people until we send them a messenger. A messenger from amongst themselves. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمٍ We have never sent a prophet except that he speaks the language of his people. That means a person who walked with them, spoke with them, a person that was just like them, a person that they could relate to. What is it with this Prophet that walks in the marketplace, uses the restrooms, eats and so on and so forth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sending them to people all over the world in every language and in every color.